Um, with that, we now would like to turn to the question and answer portion of the webinar. Um, as a reminder, uh, because of the large number of participants, we ask that you submit your questions through the chat box. Um, and Samantha Finstad will, uh, will read your question out loud and direct it to the appropriate uh, participant on the webinar today. Thank you. All right, thank you, Julie. Um, we already have a number of questions that have come in. Um, could you please uh, reconfirm the funding uh, for both the U01 and the U54? Yes, we've had several questions about this, so I'm glad that was brought up. For the U54, the budget is 1.5 million direct costs per year across the five years. For the U01, it's 500K direct costs per year for five years. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, how many institutes have to be included in the team for a uh, U01 application or for a U54 application? Um, there's no requirement for a particular number of institutes to participate. It can be a single institute or multiple, uh, multiple institutes as required for the research. Okay. Um, what about the length of the application for the U01? The research strategy is six pages for the U01. Okay, thank you. Um, can there be multi-PI leadership for a U54? Yes, there can be. Okay. Um, the uh, page limits for the course for the U54, is the three-page limit for uh, a single core or for all cores? For each core uh, that proposed, uh, you can use three pages for the research strategy per core. Okay. And can you confirm the number of shared resources apart from uh, the administrative core for the U54? Uh, they're optional. You can submit up to two. Okay. Um, and another question about cores. Uh, is there a downside to using an existing Cancer Center support grant supported shared resource rather than proposing a, a new one under the U54? Uh, there should not be any downside to that. We would encourage leveraging existing resources at your institution as appropriate. Okay, uh, thank you. Are private companies allowed to apply? Yes, <clears throat> private companies are allowed, to, are allowed to apply to the U54 and the U01. I would, uh, it is important that the private companies also do need to comply with the resource sharing requirements, um, but they are um, allowed and encouraged to apply. Uh, are two companies able to apply together for one grant? Yes, that would be allowable. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Julie, what is the number of anticipated network travel activities? Uh, we, we expect uh, one to two investigator network meetings per year. Uh, that assumes uh, a state will, or will be traveling again, uh, but we expect one to two meetings per year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And for the 10% uh, set aside, is the 10% set aside from the administrative core cost or the 10% of the total budget? The total budget, the total direct cost cap. Um, let's see, uh, what is the expected relationship between a U54 awardee and the FNL serology lab? Yeah, so we, we are going to be encouraging collaboration across the network. Um, the, the lab will be sharing assays, reagents, and samples as appropriate with members of the network. We also will anticipate uh, collaborative science uh, being performed across the network, including with the FNL uh, serology lab. So we, uh, we also expect data sharing across the network, uh, the U54 sharing with the, the lab and conversely. So we expect a great deal of collaboration, reagent, and data sharing across the network. Okay. Thank you. Um, Crystal, can fundings be combined for this application? I'm not, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Can we get more clarity on the question? Um, it, the question is, can funding be combined for a proposal? 
um, funding, com what, what sources of funding when they say combined, what does that mean? Whoever we get another comment. I don't understand that question. All right, we will we will get back uh, we will get back to that one. Um, can you submit a U01 as well as a U54 that both include similar or a related project? Uh, yes, that's a that's a good question. So um, uh, it, a U50 a project within the U54 um, could also potentially be a U01. Usually, it is not allowable to submit overlapping proposals. However, in the case of a U54, a research project in a U54 could also be submitted as a U01. And Crystal, I would ask you to uh, just confirm and add any clarity to that. Well, um, the, so the NIH policy is that the same application cannot be submitted twice for peer review. So you would not be able to submit a U54 with a project that was completely duplicative of a U01 applications project. So you cannot you cannot do that in NIH. In the same review cycle, you cannot send, submit duplicative projects. So if it's the, for the very specific project, you either have to submit it as a U01 or as one of the projects under the U54. Having said that, an institution could submit both a U01 and both a U and a U54, but they have to be distinct projects. Okay, Crystal, thanks for clarifying that. And that gets to another question that was submitted if multiple applications uh, from the same institution are allowable. Yes, they are allowable. Okay. Um, Julie, is there a minimum effort for the PI on uh, either the U01 uh, or the U54? Yes, the NCI does have a, a um, have a minimum effort uh, for uh, U01s, um, and um, there's a, there's a notice that describes that. I actually don't know that offhand. Crystal, do you know those numbers? I believe it's 1.8 calendar months for the principal investigator for a single PI. Thank and then uh, I think it's 1.2 calendar months if it's multiple PI, but we can certainly clarify that when we publish the answers to these questions. Great, thank you. Um, what is the expected relationship between the grantees and the FNL Serology Lab and Coordinating Center? Yeah, so um, as I described, we are we anticipate a highly interactive and collaborative network. Um, PIs and members of the serology lab, as well as members of uh, investigators from the capacity building centers, will participate together in a steering committee that will set the um, standards for communication, uh, data standards, and data sharing across the network. So we anticipate again this to be a highly collaborative network of investigators. Okay. Um, Julie, if you are a foreign institution, can you be part of an application as a sub-awardee? And what criteria do you need to fulfill to be a sub-awardee? Yes, uh, foreign components are allowed. In terms of criteria, Crystal, are there any uh, criteria you would highlight here? No, there are no specific criteria um, for sub-awards. Uh, however, no, there are no criteria in being a, a foreign component as a sub award. So there's nothing specific. Okay, thank you. Um, for the, um, thank you everybody for submitting your questions. Um, does the, it's a question related to the administrative core. Um, does the administrative core have to be led by the overall PI or can it be led by another PI? I believe it can be led by another PI. Um, Crystal, can you have any comments on that? So it, um, the named PI does not need to be the project lead on the administrative core. Um, they would, they, you could have a different person as the project lead, but they would not be called a, a PI on the application. Okay. Um, for the resource sharing plan, are there uh, specifics already in place for CeroNet? That will be one of the first uh, items that the, the steering committee 
well established are the, the sharing requirements. That said, we do, uh, we will be requesting that data be shared within the network um, immediately um, as it's as it's produced. And then as soon as uh, as soon as uh, it is published, data should be available to the public. Uh, but those are topics that will be discussed and confirmed by the steering committee. Okay. Um, for the U01 grant, are any cores required? No, there are no cores required uh, for the U01. Okay. Um, and should the U54 application have an overall research theme? Should the U01 have an overall research theme? Uh, sorry, the U54. Yes, the, the U54 should have an overall research theme that uh, the vision and goals for the center that are described in the overall component research strategy. Okay. Um, let's see for additional questions. Um, I see some folks uh, requesting uh, questions that are related to scope. Um, can, a, can the serological lab be a shared core? Can, is the FNL serology lab a shared core? Uh, that is not the current plan for the serology lab. Um, any tests or assays uh, that are part of your research proposal would be done at your center or your institution with, within mm -hmm. the award. However, we do anticipate the, the lab sharing uh, reagents, standards, and samples and assays with the network. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I see a question here that the U01 RFA indicates that an, an administrative and research core are required. Julie, could you please clarify this? For the U54, an administrative core is required, and at least two and up to three research projects are required. But not for the U01. But not for the U01, U01s are single research projects. Okay. Uh, can a U01 have multiple PIs? Yes, a U01 may have multiple PIs. Okay. And given that both NCI and NIAID are participating in these RFAs, is there a distinction uh, in directing the application either to NCI or NIAID? Uh, no, they will all be reviewed together by an NCI convened special emphasis panel. The, there's no need to direct them one way or the other. Okay. Um, and uh, again, I do see a number of scope questions. So if you do have a question re regarding scope, please feel free to reach out to Julie, myself, or Eric after the webinar. Um, just going, going through the list. Um, for uh, the six-page limit for research strategy, this is for the U54, is this for each project in the U54 or for all the projects together? For each project. Okay. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um, Samantha, can I clarify something? This is Crystal, because I see another question about- Sure, go uh, ahead. So the question originally asked was with whether or not two companies or two organizations could apply. And I, I just want to make sure, and then there's another question that says, can a company, can company applicants be small companies or does at least one of the joint applicants need to be a large company? I just want to make sure it's very clear that it's not a joint application. One institution or one organization is the applicant organization. There could be multiple organizations that participate and collaborate together, but those are done via sub awards. So I, I don't want to leave the impression that there can be a joint application submitted by one, more than one organization. Okay, thank you. Um... Julie, for data sharing across the network, are the different components from the network going to be sharing data with each other? So the capacity building centers, the grantees, and the FNL serology lab? Yes, it is anticipated that data will be shared across the network. And just to, as a reminder, the coordinating center is going to serve 
as uh, serve the function of coordinating the sharing of data across the network and ultimately with the broader public. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, another question related to uh, a company. Uh, can So Crystal, can a small business, uh, a small company uh, be a sub-awardee to a university? Yes, there are no limits in the, in the FOA on uh, sub-awards or on applicants other than uh, foreign institutions cannot be the, uh, the actual applicant, but there are no other limitations on participation. So it can be small companies, large companies, anything that works. Okay. Um, I have another question here about the types of core um, and whether serological work for projects can be performed by a shared serological core. So maybe the question, uh, Julie, is this for uh, cores within an institution or at another institution? Um, I believe a core could exist at another institution that would be supporting the efforts of the of the center. Crystal, do you see any, do you have any concerns? About that? I don't have any concerns about that. It would be done through a, a sub-award um, mechanism. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Julie, there's a question here about whether the U01 RFA has changed with questions relating to the page limits. No, the page limit for, for the U01 is, is six pages for the research strategy. Oh, changed relative to standard. Maybe that's the question. Uh, yes, that yes. is shorter than a typical U01. So mm -hmm. um, again, because of uh, the nature of these awards and uh, that we're not requiring extensive preliminary data that one might normally have in U01, uh, these, uh, these applications are only six pages long. Okay. Um, Julie, can you elaborate a little bit on the, uh, on the data sharing and the expectations of sharing data across the network and beyond? So we, we, are, uh, we are expecting that data be shared at, uh, in a, in a immediately uh, upon generation across the network as appropriate, um, and then shared uh, more broadly with the community upon publication. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, it, uh, uh, this is a slight, maybe slightly a scope question. Is assay development alone appropriated for this, these funding mechanisms? Yes, yeah, so um, as we discussed in the, today's webinar, assay develop, uh, this research is intended to inform assay development and assay development is in scope uh, for these RFAs. We, we also, uh, encourage um, uh, research projects to be conducted through these awards, and that re research would be would be done in conjunction with the assay development groups who are particularly interested in developing novel assays and building testing capacity um, should really um, uh, look at the RFP for the capacity building centers. And I'll note that those capacity building centers are going to be expected to participate in, uh, in sero, uh, sero surveillance uh, research as well as other serological sciences research. Um, so for those of you who are very interested in assay development and capacity building, strongly encourage you to uh, take a look at that RFP. Uh, thank you. Um, also, for with these funding mechanisms, uh, are we looking to support um, both uh, translational uh, work as well as work using human specimens? Yes. Yes, we are, we are encouraging uh, a breadth of scientific approaches from, from basic research through translational and clinical research. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and is there an expectation that for any uh, serological tests that it will be done that it will be done in a single lab? Uh, we don't have a particular requirement for that now. Okay. Um, uh, a question uh, for Crystal, uh, similar to what NIH allows with PO one applications, can a U fifty four project also be submitted as a standalone U O one project? And then if the U54 is funded, the U01 application is removed from consideration. 
No, NIH will not accept two applications that are the same in the, in the same review cycle. So uh, UL1 cannot be submitted that is the same as a project in U54 for this RFA. And keeping in mind that the, all of the applications, I believe, go to the same special, special emphasis panel. So it would require the reviewers to review the same project twice, and, that, and that's not allowed. Um, okay, uh, no clin this is a, uh, no interventional clinical trials are allowed, but what about translational research that is associated with a clinical trial, for example, a vaccine trial? No, uh, vaccine trials are not allowed through these RFAs. Okay. Um, but what about a, a trial that may use samples from a vaccine trial? Um, um, it's hard to answer that question without more context, but I would just emphasize that the, the clinical trials uh, component for these RFAs is intended to support behavioral and healthcare delivery research, not interventional, not, excuse me, treatment trials. Okay, thank you. And, and again, if you have any um, specific scope questions or questions about research projects, please feel free to reach out to Julie, myself, or Eric. And we can, um, we can further discuss this. Um, can a project core submitted as part of the U54 be substantially similar to the components of the capacity building centers application? Um, we wouldn't have any restriction on that, no. Um, I would encourage someone with those interests to look at that RFP, but there aren't any particular restrictions on uh, that conceptual overlap. Okay. Um, can small companies be competitive for the U01 given that there are SBIR grants for small businesses? Um, small companies are eligible. It's, uh, it will be, the research will be evaluated on its merits. Um, and so I don't see any particular advantage or disadvantage per se for a small company. Okay. Um, and I have a question about the mechanism. What's the difference between a U01 and an R21? So the U uh, designation uh, is for cooperative agreements. And this is, uh, these are for awards where there is substantial um, NIH staff involvement. Um, and so for both the U54 and the U01, we uh, expect that NIH staff will be interacting significantly with the awardees and the awardees will be expected to participate in, in network activities that were described. R21s um, are not cooperative agreements and do not have that staff involvement and typically are not involved in, in those sorts of network activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, still see some questions coming in. Um, uh, Julie, you had talked about this uh, earlier. Uh, the minimum effort requirements for the R01, U01, and P01, and whether there is a, a requirement for the U54. Yes, I believe that's 1.8 uh, calendar months for PIs. Okay, it looks like things are quieting down in the chat. Um, Again, thank you so much for your participation. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Julie, myself, or Eric. Um, the recording of this webinar will be posted on the NCI website uh, shortly following this meeting, and, as well as the slides. Uh, Julie, do you have any, any additional comments? No, I wanna thank everyone for your participation and interest in these very important RFAs. Um, and I will just echo uh, Samantha uh, to encourage you to reach out with any questions about your uh, particular proposal. Thanks again for participating.